Timo Meyer is back. Nico Heischer dealing with an injury. And Jack Hughes is on pace to score 205 points. Oh, boy. We have a lot to break down in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. Elias scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. rodor has got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, Scott Chalky, Plumber Play Announcer, Dell's Ride for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part time credential media member, Trey Matthews. Okay, so normally I don't record an episode during the weekend, but given the amount of storylines that took place for the Devils in their more recent matchup against the Islanders, I felt as though I would be doing you guys a great disservice if I didn't record a show to share my thoughts. So keep in mind, this is not a standard post-game recap. In the first segment, I'll talk about some of the main talking points from the game on Friday against the Islanders. And then in the second segment, we'll transition into the bigger talking point involving Nico Heischer and his injury update. Then in the third and final segment, let's talk about the Devils' MVP caliber player, Jack Hughes, or as I like to call him, the truth, because everything we've said about Jack has been coming into fruition. He and Jesper Bratt are off to magnificent starts to begin the new year. So let's talk about the Devils' 5-4 to four overtime victory against the Islanders last Friday. So it wasn't the prettiest of outings, but one of the main things I've been talking about on this show the last few episodes is that I want to see the Devils just try to like either answer on back a little earlier or dominate from start to finish. And unfortunately, if this game was more or less the same in which the Devils give up the first goal of the game and now they got to try to fight back into it, but at least they did it much earlier because one of the things that uh, was the main problem for the Devils in their other matchup against the Florida Panthers is that the Devils put up a valiant effort, but unfortunately it was too little, too late, and you can't just have one good period of hockey and expect to come out victorious. That's usually a recipe for disaster because in that game against the Panthers, the Devils got off to a very slow start in period one. They started to turn around just a little bit in period number two, but not much. And then by period number three, that was their best period. They played a great 20 minutes of hockey. And yes, a particular call on a former Devil, Dmitry Kulikov, should have been assessed a tripping on Dawson Mercer. That didn't go the way of the Devils, but I said it in that post-game recap that you can't really pinpoint the loss on one particular play. But when looking at this game against the Islanders, the one thing I do commend the Devils for is that even though the Islanders got off to a one to nothing lead, just a few minutes later, like I'd say five or so minutes, we see Dougie Hamilton tie the game on the power play. And we're going to talk about the Devils' power play momentarily because I was raving about the Devils' potential power play lineups during the offseason. I had great expectations going into the season. And right now, it's been everything I could have asked for and more. But nonetheless, this game wasn't the prettiest. It wasn't the cleanest. But a win is a win. And I think that's what fans are happy with because, yes, the Devils could have uh, tightened up the puck just a little bit more. Vitek Vanacek and Akira Schmidt, they're not really off to great starts stats-wise, so I think the Devils are still trying to figure that out. Obviously, you can't put all the blame on them, but I'm just loving what the Devils did against the Islanders because I think this could definitely be a turning point for them just because they they haven't played their best few games to open up the season, but maybe that could be a bit of a momentum shift, and we saw that last year as well because I, I gave the example in which the Devils lost two straight to open up the season. They won their third game of the year, went on a mini three-game win streak. Then they lost, I I believe, another game to the Capitals. And then after that, off and running, all gas, no breaks, went on a 13-game win streak. And every season is a little bit different. But the one thing I can say for the Devils is that they're off to a better start this year compared to last year, even though it's not by that much. It's still showing some sorts of improvement. And Take the standings for how they are for the time being with a grain of salt because at the time of recording, the Philadelphia Flyers are first in the Metropolitan Division. That's not going to last. I I, I can bet my bomb dollar 
uh, in that regards. I won't guarantee anything because I, I usually try to steer clear from guaranteeing anything. But I, I, I can make a safe bet saying that I don't think the Flyers are going to be one of the top contending teams in the Metro halfway through the year. But I don't think anyone was expecting the Devils to be uh, top notch contenders last year. But look what happened. But anyway, just focusing back on the Devils, this game, I would say, was one of their better outings because their power play was clicking. Their main stars came out to play, particularly with Jack Hughes. And we're going to talk about Timo Meyer momentarily. But the one thing that people were just raving about was that the Devils scored four power play goals. So I mentioned moments ago, Dougie Hamilton scored on the power play. Tyler Toffoli scored on the power play. Also worth mentioning, that's his first official goal as a Devil. Luke Hughes scored on the power play, and his brother Jack got the primary assist. We saw that happen at the end of last year against the Capitals, in which Luke Hughes got the uh, wraparound shot, and it was the game-winning goal in OT, and Jack Hughes had the primary assist. We saw both of them go on a tear in Game 3 against the Carolina Hurricanes in Round 2 of the Stanley Cup playoffs. So it's nice to see that Luke and Jack just have that great brotherly dynamic, and that's the, the first of many this season that – We'll probably see Luke and Jack connect in some way, shape, or form. And then speaking of Luke, I don't want to leave his brother Jack out of it. In fact, he's going to be one of the main talking points of this episode. Hughes also got a power play goal late in period number three. So it was just great to see that the power play was clicking for the Devils. And this is something that I was just preaching about during the offseason. I said, this team is far too talented to be a mediocre power play unit. And Devils reporter Sam Kassan, he actually released an article recently and talked about the Devils' power play success up to this point. He said, though it was the 16th time in franchise history that the Devils posted four man advantages tallies in a single game, it hadn't been done since March 1st, 2014, coincidentally also on Long Island in a 6-1 to victory. Ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, that was almost 10 years ago. Sam also added that and said the Devils lead the NHL with nine man advantages scored and have the second ranked power play in the NHL with a 42.9% success rate behind only Detroit, 46.2%. New Jersey has connected on nine of its 21 opportunities. So once again, guys, the power play is coming into fruition. I know Andrew Burnett, uh, a lot of people are missing him dearly, but it's that Travis Greenhouse effect taking uh, it, its mark relatively early. So I'm liking what I'm seeing for the Devils on the man advantage. And they got a lot of offensive firepower throughout their lineup to be a very deadly power play team. So in my opinion, I think this is going to continue the rest of the way. Now, speaking of the power play and people who were having success that night, let's talk about Timo Meyer because he got the primary assist on Dougie Hamilton's power play goal. So here's the thing about Meyer and his outing against the, the Islanders. Meyer actually finished with two points. So he had two assists. His other assists came in overtime when he got the secondary assist for Jack Hughes's goal. But I want to focus on the Dougie Hamilton goal because here's how Meyer set up Hamilton. So Meyer is just basically chugging down the lane, trying to create an opportunity for either himself or his teammate. And then that swarms in the penalty killers of the Islanders, and basically all the attention is on Meyer, and that leaves a few of his teammates open, particularly with Dougie Hamilton, who came flying on in, demanding for the puck. Meyer passes over to him, and, and Hamilton, just a beautiful shot, netted his third goal of the season already, and I think it's safe to say that Hamilton is one of the more underrated superstars on this Devils roster. But focusing on Timo Meyer, that's exactly what I want to see. That's exactly what I'm projecting for him the rest of the way. Because the thing about Meyer, and I said this in one of my bold takes episode a couple weeks ago, I said, I expect the goals to go down for Meyer, but I think the assists will rack up. Because the one thing that I was impressed for Meyer during the playoffs was that he was creating looks for himself and others. Now, I get it. It's one game. Definitely don't want to like read too far into it. But what a complete 360 for Timo Meyer in a few day span because on Monday he was benched in period three against the Panthers. And then fast forward a few days later, he walked away with a couple points. So I liked what I saw from Meyer. Now, post game, Jack was asked about Timo's performance against the Islanders and also his benching against the Panthers. Here's what Jack had to say 
shortly after the game had concluded. Obviously, he got a bench last game, but you played with Meyer tonight. How did it feel playing What's alongside that? him? You got he got bench last game, Timo, uh, but he played with you tonight. How'd that feel? Yeah, I mean, uh, if he's benched a lot, you know, that's that means he's not playing very well. So, we brought him in here to be a big part of our team, and uh, tonight's the Timo Meyer. We we hope to see him more nights than not. You know, played really really strong, powerful uh, skating. So. I think it's more of something for him. He's just got to, you know, not be more consistent because he's been a great player in the league for a lot of years, but maybe just uh, feel comfortable here. And, you know, he still he still hasn't been on our team too long. So uh, I think we all understand and respect his game. And uh, I think me and him and Toph did a good job tonight. I like Jack's response for one of few reasons. One, it shows tremendous leadership. He's holding everybody accountable. So one of the things I took away from the Panthers game was that Lindy Ruff was not afraid to hold his players accountable. So case in point is that he benched Meyer in period three. Not only that, he benched Marino and Lazar. And I think Marino and Lazar were, were for offensive purposes. But let's face it, Meyer and his offensive production was basically non-existent. So Meyer was a bit of a liability out there. Got a couple of costly penalties for the Devils. So he had to sit in period three. But in this game, he bounced back. But Jack is not going to celebrate it just because, like, it's one game, and he knows that Meyer's a good player, but you got to put up that performance consistently. You got to show that why you're a good player, why you got that type of money. I think that we all know that Meyer is being paid big money, but the one thing I want to see from Meyer, I think his points is going to be just fine because he's going to rack up those assists. That's exactly what I want to see. He's a bully down the lane. No one's going to uh, harass him like they do with other players. So that's my main thing. That's what I want to see from Timo Meyer from here on out. So good showing against the Islanders, but let's see if he can consistently get it going. And that was one of my main takeaways from the game. Now, we're going to talk about Nico Heischer and his little bit of a scuffle with Ryan Pollock uh, momentarily. But before we continue, I want to tell you guys about the sleeper app. So Jack Hughes scoring a hat trick. It can very well happen. Devils win the Stanley Cup in 2024. And if you want to win 100 times your money, play daily fantasy hockey on the sleeper app. So all those scenarios I just listed are possible, but for you to have a chance at winning big, you have to play daily fantasy hockey on sleeper as the official daily fantasy app of the locked on NHL network. Sleeper is our top choice for our fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. You can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy contests. So use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's Locked On NHL. See Sleeper's terms in use for details. Okay, let's talk about Nico Heischer and his injury update because he did get a little dinged up in the game against the Islanders. So what happened? Well, he and Ryan Pollock were basically tussling for the puck on the boards. It was in a corner, and unfortunately, uh, Heischer did have his head down. Pollock was kind of like giving him a little bit of a shove, and down goes Heischer, but didn't really spark that much um, uh, attention in that given time because it just looked like a normal hockey play, but he did not uh, play a single shift in period three. He was not on the bench. So a lot of people were concerned, like, what had happened to Nico? Well, Lindy Ruff gave an update post game. He said that Heischer was dealing with an upper body injury and he was going to get reevaluated on Monday. Now, we do have another update, courtesy of James Nichols of New Jersey Hockey Now. He said that Elliot Freeman mentioned on Hockey Night that it sounds like he sure will return to practice on Monday. No recalls, and everyone accounted for in Utica's game tonight is another positive indicator. So that was put out on the XF on October 21st. So I believe they're going to reevaluate Nico on Monday, see if he's good to go, and then he'll suit up in practice. We'll see what happens. But if Elliot Freeman is saying that, he sure is slated to practice on Monday, then I think that's an uplifting sign for a lot of Devils fans because if he sure goes down with an injury, then this Devils team, in terms of its overall depth, will have to step up in more ways than one. But there goes one of the star players, and we we already know what could happen if the Devils lose one of their star players. Just turn back the calendars a few seasons ago. But anyway, a lot of people were up in arms about Ryan Pollock's uh, play on Nico Heischer and a lot of people were saying like it uh, that they wanted uh, vengeance on Pollock. And basically everyone was saying like, why is he sure uh, being targeted like this? Because 
We've seen him have run-ins with Austin Watson uh, last year. Also, Matthew Kachuk just a few days ago. So that little bit of a rivalry continues to be in full swing. But anyway, just focusing on Ryan Pollock. Basically, a lot of the Devils discourse had uh, these two questions, which was, was it a dirty play on Pollock's end? And why did nobody defend Nico on his behalf? Because that's been another big talking point amongst Devils discourse for the last year or so, because it seems like Nico is left out to dry in terms of like handling his beefs or his scraps. Well, let me answer the first question. Was it a dirty play from Pollock? I'm going to say no. I looked at the replay several times. I don't think it was a dirty play because if you look, you just see that Pollock and he sure are just wrestling for the puck in a corner. He sure is just, um, he's working the corners. He's trying to get possession. And unfortunately his head was down a little bit. And Pollock just was giving him a little bit of a shove. And the thing is, even though they both stand six foot one, he sure is 175 pounds. Pollock is 214. So Pollock has about 40 more pounds on he sure. And unfortunately, I think this is one of those cases in which he sure just overestimated his strength because it's, it's something that I talked about for the Mo Sider and Jack Hughes in, incident uh, on opening night, which is Sider is just coming down and wanting to get possession of the puck, Hughes sees him in his rear view mirror and basically did all he could do to avoid him. And that's why Hughes got the penalty. In this case, it's the same circumstance, which is Pollock is just a big guy. He's battling with Heischer. Heischer's not really defending himself. He's focusing on the puck. And unfortunately, if you look at real time, once again, like we can, we have the ability to see it in slow motion, but in real time, it just looked like a normal hockey play. And I also want to add on to that, that no one really knew where the uh, injury like stemmed from because it was very low key. Like a lot of people on the X app were basically asking one another, like, when did this occur? When did he sure get hurt? Can we pinpoint it? And then once the video did surface, that's when people started to become a little uh, angry about it, including me, because he sure is the devil's captain. And if he goes down with an injury for a significant amount of time, that can really hurt the devil. So my thing is, is that I don't think it was a dirty move on Pollock's end. I just think it was just a normal hockey play, wrong place, wrong time for he sure. And unfortunately he just got out muscled and, and ultimately that was just the end result. Now, a lot of people also brought up like, why did nobody fight on Nico's behalf? Well, to answer the first half of that question, once more, it wasn't really a dirty play. So that's not something you usually fight about because it was just a, in my eyes, it was just a hard-nosed hockey play. But this Devils team, guys, I, I don't know if you guys know this or not, they just don't really fight. So according to HockeyFights.com, when we compare some of the regular season hockey fights in the Metro, the Devils are actually in the bottom three in that category. So the Flyers led all Metro teams in fights last year with 36. Then you have the Rangers with 26. Then the Capitals with 24. Islanders with 17. Blue Jackets with 16. Then the bottom three are the Devils at 14. Then the Penguins at seven. And then the Hurricanes at five. So this Devils team doesn't really fight. Now, the thing is, Timo Meyer does add some more physicality and he does add some more aggression. But Timo's not really that much of a fighter per se. He's more of a pest. He gets under your skin. And that's something I related towards uh, Miles Wood when he was still on the Devils, which was Wood was not really an enforcer. He was more of a pest. So we might see Eric Halla, Brendan Smith, Nathan Bastion drop the mitts at some point. But the end all be all is that this Devils team just doesn't really fight all that much. It's not really what their team is about. And honestly, I don't really think that's a bad thing. But obviously, like if Jack Hughes or Nico Heischer or Jesper Brad, if they take a dirty hit, you would like someone to defend them and and, you know, drop the gloves and just not be afraid to pull those punches because I talked about in one of my more recent episodes when P.K. Subban went on the Pat McAfee show and basically shared a story in which the Devils were playing the Islanders, once again, ironically, and Jack took a little bit of a, of a dirty hit from Wallstrom, and Subban didn't take exception to that. He dropped the mitts and, and fought him, and as a result, Subban got ejected from the game. So, I'd say Mason Gearston is also a decent example because Jack Hughes, he took a bad hit from Jeremy Lawson, second game of the year when Lawson was still playing on the Kraken. And basically, Gearston did, was not happy about that. He tried to fight Lawson, but the referees just broke him up. So my thing is one of two things. One, the Devils team doesn't fight. 
And that wasn't really a dirty hockey play. It was just a hard fought battle. So those are my thoughts. And Nico Heischer, once again, I don't think the injury is anything serious. I think Andre Pilat also said that the injury is not really all that bad. And um, I think he sure is slated to practice with the Devils on Monday when this episode goes live. So we'll see what happens. But uh, I think worse comes to worse for he sure it might just be day to day. And that's just pure speculation based on things I, I, that I've just seen or read about. So I think he sure is going to be fine, everybody. I don't think there's any reason to press the panic button, even if he doesn't play in, in the game against the Canadians on Tuesday. I think he'll be right back on the sheet of ice sooner rather than later. So, yes, I know people are big fans of Heischer. I'm a big fan of Heischer. I love interviewing him in the locker room. Very intelligent, very well-spoken. And just, once again, one of my favorite players to interview when I have the chance to, to be credentialed. But my thing is, in this case, just a hard battle in the corner that unfortunately did not go Heischer's way. Now, we're going to talk about Jack Hughes and the possibility of him winning MVP and also some support from his biggest fan momentarily. But before we continue, let me tell you guys about Bird Dog. So Bird Dog stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. Bird Dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but fit way better. They fit way better than regular shorts that are made of stiff, restricting cotton. Bird Dogs fix this issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches so that way you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Bird Dogs uses anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL or enter promo code locked on NHL at checkout for a free bird dogs water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NHL for a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. I promise you. And now let me tell you guys about Jace Medical because you should have every right to protect your family and loved ones especially during unprecedented times. So Jace Medical now offers customizable for your Jace case with dozens of add-on medications. Choose the medications that best fit you and your family's unique needs. So the Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. All it takes to get a Jace case is to fill out a simple online form. And in some cases, jump on a quick call with one of their board certified physicians, get ongoing care from the physicians on any treatment related questions, doctor created, doctor recommended. So don't get caught unprepared. Everyone should be empowered to take care of themselves and their loved ones, like I just said, during the unexpected. Jace handles everything from online evaluations to licensed pharmacy medication, delivery, and ongoing consolation and care. So go to jacemedical.com and enter code locked on at checkout for a $20 discount on your order. That's promo code locked on at jacemedical.com. Okay, so obviously Jack Hughes scored the game-winning goal in overtime that solidified the Devils' 5-4 to four victory. And Jack Hughes basically, once again, making headlines with his razzle-dazzle and his great point production. Now, I can sit up here and, and tell you guys what I saw, and basically Jack Hughes is amazing, Jack Hughes should be MVP, but let's hear it from probably the Devils' biggest advocate in mainstream media, and that is former New Jersey Devil, P.K. Subban. So here's what Subban had to say on his social media page shortly after Jack Hughes got that game-winning goal. Check it out. Hughes, absolutely amazing overtime winning goal. What did he do? How did the goal happen? Well, he gets across the blue line. It's one on three, goes east-west, defenseman, no stick, no ability, pucks in the back of the net. Who else does this? The MVP, Connor McDavid. We go back to when he played against the Rangers. He goes east-west, tic-tac-toe around four guys. He's downhill. You're in trouble. Pucks in the back of the net. Against the Toronto Maple Leafs in Toronto, in his hometown. East-west, tic-tac-toe. Morgan Riley, no stick, no ability. Pucks in the back of the net. Jack Hughes has the same ability to go east-west and make you pay when you give him time and space. That's what he did last night. That, that's what he's going to continue to do unless these D-men take away his time and space. You give the greats time and space, the puck ends up in your net. Did you guys know that Jack Hughes is the fastest player to reach 10 points in a season in Devils history? Four games. The previous record was five games by John McClain in 1988. So Jack Hughes is off to a fantastic start. And similar to what PK said, the only obstacle that I see for Hughes in terms of him potentially becoming the second Devils player 
to win the Hart Trophy is that he needs to transition from a devil superstar to an NHL superstar. And now since the devils are on full display, everyone knows about them. Everyone knows how potentially good they could be. They're no longer the underdogs. I think Jack Hughes, this is his time to shine and he's making the most out of it. So 10 points already through four games. That is incredible. And that doesn't happen too often. Jack Hughes is special and I'm running out of adjectives to basically describe him. I, I really hope he can maintain this going forward. I, I have some interesting faith in him, but for any of you who are interested, according to Ryan Novozinski, Jack Hughes is on pace for 205 points. Obviously, I don't think he's going to get 200 points, but still, it's it's worth mentioning that his point production, it's been incredible. And all the assists that he has this year are primary assists. He has not had his secondary assists this season. So Hughes has been just... The, the superstar player the Devils have been yearning for the past few seasons. And now he's about to become an NHL superstar. And I think now is his time to win the Hart Trophy. So if he maintains the same amount of success going forward, why not? Let's push for Jack Hughes to win the Hart Trophy. I just want to put that into the light. And obviously, uh, we're going to talk about Jack Hughes a lot more as the season progresses. But I just wanted to say... Jack Hughes is incredible, and that's why I wanted to use a third and final segment. So let me know what you guys think. What did you think about the Nico Heischer and Ryan Pollock of situation that happened in period two? What did you think about the Devils' previous game against the Islanders? And say something nice about Jack Hughes. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment down below. If you're listening on podcast streaming service, hit me up on my personal X page app at TreyMap4 or the show's X page app at Locked On Devils. As for this episode, that's all the time I have for you, so continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again. Special episode for you guys because I love you dearly.